childishly tried to fake a pregnancy test. I went to the store, got a pregnancy test, was going to take two negatives, turn it into a positive. Take two negatives and turn it into a positive? Yes. Mm -hmm. Crack them open and... I'm like, did you cheat on me? I mean, what's, what's going on? She like, yeah, I did cheat. Oh. So she, so she admitted that she cheated. I did, Your Honor. I admitted that she I cheated admit. on him. We were like, he said... He gets to call in her, and she gets to dodge and everything and ignore his phone call. Well, I remember getting the call. And he tries to call, and he's like, at? well, she's not answering her phone. Three different other That's guys in me. the hood, daddy. That's because of me. What did you just say? She calls three other dudes in the neighborhood that we live in, daddy. Miss Kavanaugh and her mother hit the courtroom scene, ready to dive into the paternity pool with a splash, claiming Mr. Bowles is the baby daddy of three-week-old Malcolm. The plot thickens as Miss Kavanaugh reveals her calendar was as busy with Mr. McElliot as it was with Mr. Bowles during the Who's Your Daddy window. This sets the stage for a roller coaster of emotions and legal shenanigans, introducing us to a love triangle that's more tangled than headphones in a pocket. Miss Kavanaugh, you and your mother are appearing in court today to prove paternity of your three-week-old son, Malcolm. You claim his biological father is Mr. Bowl, even though you admit to being intimate with another man, Mr. McElliot. That was unreal. With the confidence of someone who's sure she's found the one, the father that is, Miss Kavanaugh lays it all out. She's convinced Mr. Bowles is Malcolm's dad, thanks to their less than careful liaisons. Her frustration could cut through steel as she talks about Mr. Bowles' ghosting skills, completely unaware of his potential mini-me. This moment is more loaded than a family car on a road trip, highlighting Miss Kavanaugh's yearning for Mr. Bowles to step up and join the parenting dance. Wait until you see this. Your Honor, I believe Mr. Bowles is my son's father. Even though he wasn't in a committed relationship, we had unprotected sex frequently, and he has not been around. He doesn't ask about my son. He probably didn't even know my son's name was Malcolm until now, and I'm just ready to prove that he is the father. Wow, that was insane. Mr. Bowles jumps into the fray with the enthusiasm of a cat heading to a bath, casting doubt on his fatherhood status. He reminisces about their first rendezvous and the subsequent discovery of Miss Kavanaugh's guest list, which does not nothing but add fuel to his doubtfire. This plot twist serves up Mr. Bowles' side of the story, stirring the pot of paternity mystery with a side of trust issues. It's like a soap opera, but with more legal fees. Oh wait, it gets even better. Actually, when we first met the first night, we had sex within like 20 minutes of being in her house. It wasn't then, within 20 minutes. And then minutes. like probably three weeks later, maybe two weeks later, I found like an open condom wrapper in her bathroom. Well, I just- She had already said that- Just because- like, I was the only person she was having sex with. And so then I found the wrapper. Just because I had sex with him on the first night doesn't mean I have sex with everybody on the first night. I actually cared for him and had feelings for him. We actually talked for a couple years on Facebook before I even met him, so we had a, a, some type of connection. It wasn't just he came over one night and just we did it. What we just saw, in a plot twist worthy of a daytime Emmy, Miss Kavanaugh confesses she faked a pregnancy to snag Mr. Bowles' attention, only to find out the universe had a plus one in store for her. This revelation peels back the layers of Miss Kavanaugh's desperation for love, turning her deception into an unexpected reality check. It's a moment that mixes a bit of oops with a whole lot of what now. This will blow your mind. Childishly tried to fake a pregnancy test. I went to the store, got a pregnancy test, was going to take two negatives, turn it into a positive. Take two negatives and turn it into a positive? Yes. Mm -hmm crack them open and turn them into a positive. Oh, and put two of the, the, the lines together. So you had a plan to pretend you were pregnant yes. in order to keep him. Yes, and then what happened? Well, I took both of the tests, Your Honor, and I went to go eat, and I came back and they were both positive. Wow. What's your place on? unbelievable turn of events. Enter Mr. McElliot, the unexpected knight in shining armor, ready to play dad, regardless of the DNA bingo. His willingness to step into the father role without a biological claim throws a curveball into the mix, showing there's more to fatherhood than genetics. This scene shifts the spotlight from who's the bio dad to what makes a dad, serving up a side of emotional intelligence with a dash of unexpected maturity. Stay tuned, the next clip is a doozy. I think it's time we meet Mr. McElliot. Jerome, will you please escort him in? Yeah. Please describe your relationship with Miss Kavanaugh. My relationship with Miss Kavanaugh, I would say, is a very special one. I got her number. I called her that evening, offered her to go a movie. Uh, we hooked up and went out to eat or something like that. But ever so since. So you took her on dates and courted her and treated her like a lady should be treated? Always. So. At some point, she found out she was pregnant and she says that she told Mr. Bowles. How did you find out? She sent me a picture of an ultrasound. I also have that um, with me. You do? Let me yes. see that, please. 
prepare to be amazed. Just when you thought the paternity plot couldn't get any thicker, a wild card is thrown into the mix with the hint of a third mystery man who might be Malcolm's real dad. This new twist adds a layer of complexity to the already convoluted paternity puzzle, making the court drama more suspenseful than a season finale cliffhanger. It's like Maury Povich meets Agatha Christie with a dash of who done it. You're not going to believe what happens next. This part is absolutely jaw-dropping. The DNA results are in. This bombshell drops like a bad beat in a silent disco, stirring up a cocktail of emotions and unanswered questions. Have you met Malcolm and established a relationship? No. You have not? I have not. So what happened to the plan? Somewhere along the line, um, things started to get a little bit off the track, but I believe that one thing that me and her had in common was the intention to really find out if I was the father or not, or the same thing with Mr. Bowles here. But um, I believe there was third party or something that was included in this. Yes. Okay. That's I true, Your Honor. <laughs> oh, no, that's true. Mr. McElliot, you are not his father. Mr. Bowles, you are not his father. <laughs> Calm down. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to put you guys through all that. Ms. Nesbitt is chilling in her hallway post-drama when Mr. Brown, the neighbor, pops over to play the knight in shining armor. One thing leads to another, and bam, they're making more than just small talk. Fast forward two weeks, and Ms. Nesbitt's dropping a bombshell on Mr. Henderson, the other contender in the Daddy Derby, saying, surprise, you might be a papa. This juicy tidbit sets the stage for a paternity puzzle that's more tangled than last year's Christmas lights. Well, me and Mr. Henderson, we got into an argument and it led in my apartment hallway and Mr. Brown scene, so he came to my door, he comforted me, and it led off to him coming in, giving me a massage. One night? Yes, one night, and two weeks later, I ended up pregnant, and I told Mr. Henderson. Do you remember this day, Mr. Henderson, when yes, she told you she was pregnant? Yes, Your Honor. Did she also say I had slept with Mr. Brown? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, she but did? She told me she used a condom, Your Honor. Mr. Henderson, when she told you she'd also slept with Mr. Brown, but it was just one night? Yes, yes Your Honor. Did you say to yourself, well, I know now this could possibly be his child, or you tried to just... I was living in denial, Your Honor. The baby looked just like you. You took practice with her. I you go to doctor's appointment, everything, and now you're your sitting up here denying her. In a turn of events that leaves everyone on the edge of their seats, Ms. Nesbitt, in a plot twist that surprises absolutely no one, reveals that her one-night rodeo with Mr. Brown might have left behind a little souvenir, thanks to a protective gear fail. Enter Judge Lake, ready to cut through the confusion with the precision of a ninja blender. This is where the rubber meets the road, or in this case, where it didn't quite meet the standards. Just when you think you've seen it all, the next revelation promises to turn everything upside down. Positive this Mr. Brown encounter was a one-night thing? Yes, it was. But oh, you do right. You're saying it no, only takes Honor. one time to have a baby. So you knew that. Yes. And you're saying the protection you used broke. Yes, Your Honor. Can you believe what's unfolding right before our eyes? Mr. Brown steps into the spotlight, spinning a tale of their friendship with benefits that supposedly was a one-hit wonder he fondly calls birthday sex. But hold the phone. Ms. Nesbitt isn't buying what he's selling, hinting at a saga instead of a short story. The he said, she said banter raises more eyebrows than a high school drama club. And just when you think it can't get any more complicated, the plot thickens in a way you won't believe. Different names, like it was this just Tracy, one time. Nancy. Your Honor, she's telling me that it's been going on longer than that. It was more than one. It night. was just they said that it was, was just it. One, one night only, but we used to always text and stuff like that. You all heard. were texting each other even after you all. Yeah, yeah, we stayed in contact. We, we never. But you only had with. sex the one time. Just that one night on her birthday when her and, and the protection into it. broke. I don't remember protection broke. I was buzzing a little bit, but I don't remember no protection broke. Hold on to your seats because this roller coaster is about to take another wild turn. Just when you thought it couldn't get soapier, Mr. Brown spills the tea about being in the potential daddy pool. The back and forth has more ups and downs than a roller coaster at Six Flags, showcasing a tangled web of emotions, doubts, and maybe a few too many text messages. This segment has all the feels, drama, and suspense of a season finale cliffhanger. Brace yourselves because what comes next is a game changer that will leave everyone talking. As the tension reaches a fever pitch, drum roll please, the DNA results are in, and the daddy of the hour is. So now, what happened when she got pregnant? She had texted me and told me I got something to tell you. I'm like, tell me. She was like, then she's like, I'm embarrassed. So I'm like, don't be embarrassed. Tell me. She was like, I'm pregnant. It could be you or Don, baby. So at this point, you've been honest with both men, and they both know they are potential fathers. Yes, Your Honor. Baby Zion is born, and who steps up to the plate for her? I stepped up to the plate for her, Your Honor. It ain't my baby, so I ain't stepping up to no place. So, Mr. Brown, you you said I it's not your... Because I had a condom on, and look at her. She looked just like him. She a beautiful baby. She looked just like him, you know what I'm saying? Mr. Brown, you 
are not her friends. Oh! Hey, I told okay, sit down, Mr. Brown. We don't, we don't, oh, man, we don't, we, your name you. rhymes with clown, I'm but ready, you're I'm not ready. gonna clown today. I'm... Mr. Henderson, you are her father. Told you you was her father from the beginning. So buckle up for some soap opera level drama. The claimant, Ms. Wandick, basically goes, you want a boy with me? To Mr. Stampley, who's all, nope, just friends here, despite already having a mini me. Mr. Stampley's like, who, me, a kid? Nah, making us all scratch our heads about what's really going on in this love puzzle. And oh boy, you're not gonna believe what's coming up next. He wanted a relationship. Something? No, your honor, he's lying. When we met, he was like, oh, cause he does have another daughter that's older, 15. And he, when we met, he was talking about, oh, I think you could give me my boy, let's try to have a boy oh together. So you did not say that to me, oh my God. Mr. Stampley? Okay. Just when you thought it couldn't get spicier, Ms. Wandick drops the bomb that she's pregnant right before Mr. Stampley takes a 30-day vacation behind bars. She's all, surprise, you're maybe a dad. This throws a wrench in the works about who the daddy could be given the whole jail timeout. Stick around, the plot's about to thicken even more. When you found out you were pregnant, what did you say? I told him that I was pregnant. I said, Mr. Stampley, I went away. I'm pregnant. I went away for 30 days, Your Honor. I went to jail. Me and her was together for a short time, and then I went away to jail for 30 days. Okay, Your Honor, but when before he went away, I was pregnant, Your Honor. Your Honor. So you're saying when you got together with him, you were pregnant? Hold on to your hats, because Ms. Wandick then admits to a sneaky side quest with another dude feeling guilty after her rendezvous with Mr. Stampley. Now, Mr. Stampley's doing the math, wondering if he's really the father or just a plot twist in this daytime drama. But wait, there's a twist that'll make your head spin coming right up. I, asked her, I said, man, did you cheat on, you know, because I started getting, I started feeling some type of way. I'm like, did you cheat on me? I mean, what's, what's going on? She's like, yeah, I did cheat. Oh. So she, so she admitted that she cheated. I did, Your Honor. I admitted that she I cheated admit. on him. We were, like he said, we was at his friend's house, we got done having sex, and then after we got done having sex, I felt bad, and then that's when I confessed that at least I was woman enough to tell I you, but her, your I honor, I was... Next up, we dive into the who else could be the daddy saga with hints that Miss Wandick might have been playing more than one field. A sneaky family member of Mr. Stampley's claims to have receipts of her adventures. As the mystery deepens, you won't believe the scandal brewing just around the corner. You think the cheating is very well what could have led to the pregnancy. Correct. Meaning somebody else could be the child's biological Correct. father. Now, when you were cheating, yes. was it just one other person or more than it one? It was just one other person, Your Honor. Your Honor. I got a family member that even told me that she was doing a bunch of cheating while I was in jail. In a wild turn of events, Ms. Wandick's own sister, Ms. Baker, steps up as the star witness for Team Stampley, spilling the tea on her sister's secret escapades. Talk about family feud meets courtroom drama. This bombshell throws family loyalty out the window, but oh, the drama doesn't stop here. The next revelation will have you dropping your popcorn. What do you know about this? Well, I caught my sister cheating on Mr. Stampley. Scandalous while he was incarcerated. You did? Yes, ma'am. And what happened? How did you catch her? Um, I was taking my kids to school. When I returned home, she was in the bedroom with another man. Really? Yes, uh, ma'am. And so was that just that one time you caught her? On several occasions. It was not several occasions. It why was, are you lying? No like, you don't even like you. I don't even know why you're here. Why are you lying? Just when you thought it was safe to go back into the water, Ms. Baker whips out a calendar like a detective, marking the days of Mr. Stampley's time out, Ms. Wandick's love diary entries, and the pregnancy plot twist. It's like trying to solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. But hold on to your seats. The next piece of evidence is about to blow your mind. And for the grand finale, they whip out a conception calculator, turning the courtroom into a makeshift episode of Maury. I mean, I actually your have Honor, a calendar. Your Honor, can right I please here say that something? I would like to present. You have to a you. calendar. Yes, ma'am. Let me see that. Here you go. In green are the dates Mr. Stampley was incarcerated. In blue are the dates that you know for certain your sister had sex with her ex. In red, October 3rd is the date your sister, Miss Wandig, discovers she's pregnant. Yes, ma'am. And Namaya was born June 13th. Yes, ma'am. Miss Wandig, as you look at that calendar, is it an accurate representation of your sexual activities during that time? No, Your Honor. Calculate the probable dates of conception are September 16th through September 24th. Fourth, if we look at the calendar, we see you were with your ex during the time Mr. Stampley was incarcerated. 
Judge Lake, playing the role of the classroom teacher, asks Mr. Moore, the kid caught with his hand in the cookie jar, to show what he's got up his sleeve. So, Mr. Moore pulls out a photo that looks like a scene from a wild party at Ms. Matthews's house, except the party was just Ms. Matthews, and the fun activity was turning Mr. Moore's windows into modern art. The reason? Mr. Moore decided to play photographer with another woman and splash it all over social media. It's like watching two kindergartners fighting over who gets to play with the red crayon, except with more legal fees and less supervision. This whole exchange is basically a masterclass class in how not to handle breakups and jealousy. Ryan, His what's car. wrong with you, yes. man? I don't right. have to lie about what I do. Mr. Moore, let me see this evidence you have. You was real chilly this that This is a picture of what? The night she busted out my windows from me uploading a picture with another girl on my yes. social network. It was but either it's okay. the window or bust It's the okay for her to bust my windows out, though. And guess, yes. guess so what? Can you believe what just unfolded? Next up, we've got Mr. Moore wearing his heart on his sleeve, talking about his baby girl, Zania. But there's a plot twist. He's not sure if he's actually the daddy. It's like an episode of Maury, but with less cheering. Mr. Moore's got love to give, but the gossip mill and Ms. Matthews' adventures have him wondering if he's more of an uncle than a dad. This part of the story is like a roller coaster of feelings and rumors, where everyone's trying to figure out if the stork got lost on the way to delivering Zania. You're not going to believe what happens next. You have serious doubts as it relates to the paternity of Zaniah. Absolutely. I love Zaniah. Believe you the didn't finish, do nothing's good enough. Nothing's good what enough. What is $20 a week? $20 a or week. Or a month. Okay, well, why don't you ask those guys? And your doubts, your hold on, hold that. on. Your doubts are rooted in the fact that you believe she was sleeping with... Just when you thought it couldn't get any more dramatic, enter Miss Thomas, Mr. Moore's niece, ready to stir the pot. She's basically the neighborhood's unofficial news reporter, giving us the lowdown on Ms. Matthews' reputation and adding more fuel to the who's your daddy fire. It's as if she's read every gossip magazine ever and is now applying her knowledge to real life, making sure Uncle Moore keeps his eyebrows raised and his doubts high. Her testimony turns the courtroom into a daytime TV show, where everyone's eager to see what bombshell will be dropped next. And trust me, the upcoming revelation is a game changer. Hold on to your seats because this next part is a real doozy. Now, Judge Lake turns detective and zeroes in on Zania's birth certificate, which seems to be playing a game of Where's Waldo with the father's name. This missing name is like a blank space on a test where you know you knew the answer but just can't fill it in. Ms. Matthews, playing the role of the solo superhero mom, talks about her challenges and adventures in raising Zania alone. Why do you have doubt that your uncle is the father of Ms. Matthews' child? Because Ms. Matthews, she gets around. The whole hood knows her. She, it's, it's nothing new. When he told me he started dating her and she was pregnant, I just started laughing because, like, you don't know how many other dudes she didn't told this to before. Like, this is really? a rumor around the hood. She yeah. gets around. But what, about what do you, your what do you mean? Hood? What do you mean? She My told other. Let's not around, play crazy. Let's not play crazy. Come Let's on not play crazy. The whole 117. You know gets you. around. Let's baby. not play crazy. What about crazy? the back page? So hold on, Miss Thomas. Go take care of your daughter. That's what you need to do. Ladies, go take care of your daughter. Ladies, ladies. I'm trying to understand when you said. I'm saying she's just known around the neighborhood for lying, and he gets to call in her, and she gets to dodge and everything and ignore his phone call. Yeah, I remember getting the call. And he tries to call, and he's like, at? well, she's not answering her phone. Your Honor. Look at my daughter. Y'all see my daughter? She, Don't called, she, three, she, she called three different other That's guys in me. the hood. Daddy. That's because of me. What? Mr. Moore, you are not her father. That's, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking I'm done. I'm done. It's over with. The episode kicks off with the judge cracking a light joke, setting a relaxed tone before diving into the serious business of announcing the case title, Thomas V. McKee. The courtroom chuckles ripple through as the judge quips about needing a gavel app on his phone. Because you know, there's an app for everything these days. Miss Thomas, you and the defendant, Mr. McKee, met on an online dating website, and the conversation quickly jumped offline and into Mr. McKee's bed. Can you believe the twists and turns here? Miss Thomas recounts her digital romance saga with Mr. McKay, humorously nodding she thought they were the real deal. Until he ghosted her over a pregnancy scare, talk about swipping left on responsibility, she jests that their love was so digital. She's surprised the baby wasn't emailed to her, adding a touch of techie humor to their tale. You won't believe what's coming next. You believed you were in a committed relationship with the defendant and was devastated when he denied your pregnancy, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Just when you thought it couldn't get more outrageous, in a scene straight out of a soap opera, Mr. McKee dramatically denies fatherhood, claiming the baby didn't inherit his signature nose or unmistakable inability to dance. Hence, he can't be the dad. He humorously suggests that if there were a dad dance gene, he'd be off the hook immediately, given his notorious two left feet. But hold on, the story takes an even wilder turn. Mr. McKee, you say that there is no way you could be the biological father of the plaintiff's son, Carson. You were 100% sure that her baby belonged to another man. Is that correct? 
Yes, John. All right, so. Brace yourself for the unexpected. Ms. Thomas paints a vivid picture of their roller coaster romance, throwing in a funny anecdote about how their first dinner date was at a drive thru, symbolizing the fast paced nature of their fleeting connection. She quips that she should have known the relationship was drive thru quality. Fast, convenient, and leaving you hungry for more an hour later, what comes next will have you in stitches. First of all, we uh, met on a dating website, mm -hmm. as you spoke. We started off talking, and then once we started knowing each other who we were, I started... How long did you talk on the phone? Maybe about a month or two. Okay. And then I started going to see him, maybe like a 45-minute drive from where I live, like every other day. So I'm assuming, like, I'm spending the night, staying the night with him, things like that. So I'm assuming... I'm making, and you have, you're having a good time, getting to know time, one yeah, another. Yeah. You all, obviously, since you're spending the night, already started having sex. Right, yeah, right. This is only the beginning of the hilarity. The plot thickens as we learn about the couple's mismatched love goggles. Ms. Thomas dreamed of a fairy tale, while Mr. McKee couldn't even commit to a Netflix series, let alone a relationship. She wryly notes that he was less Prince Charming and more Prince Alarming, with his commitment level on par with a free trial subscription, enjoyable until it's time to get serious. Next part is even more ludicrous. He's, he's not a bad looking person. He looks, he, he's funny. He's, he's hilarious. He keeps, he keeps a smile so on his face. So he's funny. He's good looking. Yeah, he's, you thought you would earth. met a nice right. guy. Right. Well, I thought maybe it was going to head that way, but evidently he wasn't looking for what I was looking for. The saga continues with even more laughter. Ms. Thomas's recount of Mr. McKee's reaction to her pregnancy news is laced with sarcasm, emphasizing his Olympic-level sprint away from responsibility. She jests that he was faster to update his relationship status to it's complicated than to acknowledge the pregnancy, showcasing his priorities with a side of snark. But wait, there's more to this comedic drama. So about a month, you would drive to go see him? Like every other day, I drive like in, at nighttime, I put my kids to bed. I go see him till it's time for them to go to school. I wake up and be back home before my kids wake. So I have an older child, so she'll be home with them. But I didn't do it every day. And so after this month, Mr. McKee, you're in this casual relationship. She's striving to come see you. You don't feel like you're ready to make a commitment. At some point, you find out you're pregnant. And when you find out, you call Mr. McKee and tell him? Yes, ma'am. As if it couldn't get any crazier, Mr. McKay's block and ghost maneuver post-pregnancy news is likened to a magician's vanishing act, except he's disappearing from fatherhood duties, not a stage. She adds that even Houdini would be impressed by how quickly Mr. McKay managed to make his sense of responsibility disappear. But the next twist is something no one saw coming. When you found out she was pregnant, what were you thinking, sir? Well, she called when she was like three months pregnant. I know I got a phone call, I was at work. I told her I'd call her back, but I ended up blocking her number. <laughs> what? He, he blocked it after we had that conversation. After we had that really? conversation. Really? After, after, blocked blocked, after I blocked the number, she had to had the babe and called me from another number. Okay, and then blocked her number? Yes, ma'am. Prepare for an unexpected turn. The family chimes in with their two cents, humorously comparing baby pictures and noting the lack of a family resemblance, especially the baby's apparent disdain for pineapple pizza, a McKay family favorite. One relative jokes that the baby's gourmet tastes lean more towards organic milk than fast food, questioning the McKee lineage with a culinary twist. And just when you think it can't get any wilder, it does. Your first response was what? The baby look like he can be for Donald Trump. <laughs> Like, really? <laughs> oh. Really? I didn't expect that one. He thinks the, the color makes a difference. The color don't make a difference. I think what you're saying is you thought the baby was biracial? Oh, he's adorable. <laughs> so when you saw the baby, you said, that's not mine. Yes, John. The revelations keep getting more astonishing. Revelations about Mr. McKee's other pending paternities are delivered with a hint of irony, showcasing his talent for spreading love far and wide, albeit non-committally. A family member quips that they should start a daycare with a McKay wing, given the growing number of offspring, highlighting his prolific paternity portfolio with a dash of wit. But the next revelation is truly jaw-dropping. So the entire nine months you went without the support? When I went to labor, my family was like, what? You in the hospital having what? I said, I'm in the hospital having my baby. And you had no idea, Mr. McKee. Oh, man, I didn't know she was having a baby, Your Honor. But you look at that baby. Now you see her in here crying because she had to go through this entire pregnancy by herself. She couldn't get in touch with you. And you just standing there casual like, it didn't mean anything to me. 
This story is far from over, Mr. McKee's blasé approach to the paternity circus is highlighted with a quip about him needing a loyalty card for paternity tests. Buy 10, get the 11th free. He adds that he's considering sponsorship opportunities, given his frequent appearances, turning the courtroom into a potential advertising goldmine. The climax is up next, and it's one you won't want to miss. The final twist is about to reveal. But what if he's not mine, y'all? And what if he is not? I apologize if he's not, but I'm 100% sure. So when is the first time you met Carson? I think mean, he was like a week old. So now when you got there and you saw the baby, talk to me about how you felt. The same way he's feeling now. <laughs> he questioning, like, are you sure? Is it mine? Why is his skin color? That's all he keeps saying. But he, he adores him, I'm not gonna lie. But... It has been determined by this court. Mr. McKee, you are not the father. Huh. Are you serious? Huh. He is not the father, Miss huh. Thomas. Um...